Hi, this is Ameya Abhyankar from FinQuest Institute. In this video, we'll discuss cash and carry arbitrage and we'll study this concept from the perspective of forward contracts. These are a few points which will be discussed as a part of this video. A quick recap of forward contracts. So a forward contract as we know is a customized transaction between two counterparties whereby they agree to buy or sell a certain asset at a pre-specified time and a pre-specified price in the future. So there is a long and a short position in a forward contract. So long can be synonymous to a buy whereas short can be synonymous to a sell position in the forward contract. And as mentioned earlier, this is a commitment. So both of the counterparties have to abide by their side of the trade. So uh, unlike an option, there is no way to skip this trade. Once, one you, once you enter into a forward contract, uh, that commitment has to be completed. So let's understand the mechanism of a forward contract through a simple example. Let's say I want to purchase a certain asset from a certain counterparty. And imagine that I want to purchase that asset at $100 and I want to purchase it in one month's time. So my time to maturity is one month. So I go to the counterparty and I propose that we enter into a forward contract today such that in one month time I will be purchasing the asset from them at $100. So we, so if my counterparty agrees, we have a forward contract in place and uh, that commences today. Now at initiation, I don't have to pay or there is no exchange of uh, cash which happens at the start of the forward contract. For the next one month, we do nothing. We are simply holding that forward on our books. At the one month time point, I will be going to the counterparty and I will be purchasing the asset at 100. So this is where the part of forward commitment comes in. So imagine two scenarios. So let's say the asset price in one month has moved to 150. This is scenario one. And scenario two is the asset price has dropped to 50. So focusing on scenario one, I am uh, I am happy to exercise my forward contract because I am getting to purchase the asset at $100 when the market is actually paying $150 for the same asset. So I'm saving $50 on this trade owing to the forward contract. Take scenario two. Here the asset price has dropped to 50. Now since I'm a part of this forward transaction, I have to abide by that and I'll have to purchase the asset at $100. So although the open market is willing to sell the asset at 50, I'll be bounded by the transaction and I have to purchase it at 100. So I'm losing $50 on this trade. So the point to be made here is no matter whether we end up in scenario 1 or scenario 2, we have to make good our side of the trade because this is a forward commitment. So let's try to relate this with the three conditions which define the buyer and seller for a contract. So the buyer of the contract acquires a legal obligation to buy the asset. So in our example, I will be purchasing that asset from the counterparty, so I am the buyer. Expiration date is fixed because I will be transacting or I will be purchasing the asset at the one month time point. So my time to maturity is 1M, so expiration date is fixed. The delivery price is also fixed, so I have promised that I will be purchasing the asset at $100. So my delivery price also gets fixed at initiation. Now let's understand the meaning of a forward price. So a forward price can be considered as a no arbitrage price which has which has been pre-decided at contract initiation and this is the price at which the asset will be transacted at the expiration date or the delivery date of the forward contract. So depending on what the underlying is we can have different types of forward prices. So if it's a equity share I'll have an equity price as uh, the forward price. If it's a bond I can have YTM. If it's a forward rate agreement, uh, it can be a certain LIBOR quotation on that, uh, on that FRA, which will be the forward price for the transaction. The value for the long or short position at initiation of the forward contract, this is zero. So that's why we call this as a no arbitrage price. And this means that whenever we are entering into a transaction, then neither of the counterparty should be able to make money at the expense of the other. 
that's why we say the value of the forward for the long and short position is zero at initiation. Here we are studying the cash and carry arbitrage concept which is an extension to the no arbitrage principle which we just discussed. So to understand that there are a few assumptions which we have to take keep in mind. The transaction costs are assumed to be zero. There is no restriction on short selling and borrowing and lending can be done at unlimited amounts and that can be done at the risk free rate. Now what is the general formula for arriving at the forward contract price? So we can write it as FP which is my forward price equal to S0 which is the spot price today into 1 plus RF where RF is the risk free rate and capital T is the time to maturity of my forward contract. So putting some numbers in this formula, imagine that I have a zero coupon bond as the asset, as the underlying asset for this forward contract. And let's say the time to maturity for the contract is three months. The face value of the bond is 1000. And let's say the bond is currently trading at 500. We'll assume a risk free rate of 6%. So the forward price for this contract whereby this zero coupon bond is my underlying, it will be given by, I'll be, I'll be just plugging in the values into the above formula. And just remember that whenever we are doing these kind of calculations, we need to use the year fraction. So since there is three months, I need to write it as three by 12. So I have the corresponding year fraction in the calculation. So this comes out to be approximately 507.35. So this is what we call as the forward price or the no arbitrage forward price for this contract. We'll use this forward price and try to understand the cash and carry arbitrage whenever a forward contract is overpriced. Extend the same example which we discussed uh, of, this, of the same zero coupon bond. So we have calculated no arbitrage price as 507.35. The time to maturity was three months. The risk free rate is 6% and the current price is $500. Now let's take a scenario where the forward contract is priced at 510. So here we can say that the forward is overpriced. Because the no arbitrage price is 507.35 where, whereas the forward contract is being priced at 510. So because of this difference, there is an arbitrage opportunity because we are because there is a violation of the no arbitrage principle. So there is an opportunity which we can capture. So let's try to understand how we can lock in this arbitrage profit today. So we'll focus on the actions which are to be done today. So whenever we are trying to capture an arbitrage profit, always remember we have to buy low and we have to sell high. So buy low sell high. So here we'll be selling the forward contract because it is overpriced. So we'll be shorting the forward contract which we do right here in step one and in step two we borrow $500 from the bank at 6% for three months and we purchase the underlying or we purchase the bond that is we are going long the bond so we are buying low then we do nothing so this is a transaction done today. Now Let's see what happens at the three month time point. So with the time value of money, the borrowing cost is going to increase. So simple compounding, which is 500 compounded uh, 500 into the uh, 1.06, which is uh, the risk free rate raised to three by 12. So it is 50.35. So this is how much I owe to, to my local bank. Next. I am holding a short position in the forward. So whenever I am holding a short position, it's my responsibility to deliver or sell the asset to the counterparty. So I will be delivering the bond which I had purchased three months back. So if we go back a step, so in step two today, we had bought the bond. So this is the bond which we will be delivering as a part of the short position in the forward and we will be receiving $510 in return. This is because the forward contract was done at 510. So this was a contracted price. So I deliver the bond and I receive cash 510. So here my arbitrage profit is going to be the cash receipt of 510 through my forward contract minus 
the borrowing which I owe to my local bank, which is 507.35. So simply taking a difference between the two, this comes out to be $2.65. So this is what we call as an arbitrage profit. And we were able to earn this arbitrage profit because there was a mismatch between the no arbitrage price, which is 507.35 here, and the price at which the forward was contracted, which is 510. And this is how we can lock in a cash and carry arbitrage opportunity. Now, similar to cash and carry arbitrage, there is a related concept called as reverse cash and carry arbitrage. So that happens whenever the forward contract is underpriced. So we'll discuss that concept in a separate video. Thank you.